Historical importance for a sneaker is hard to judge sometimes, and as Nike's catalog kept expanding into the late 90s, we saw the company experimenting with new designs and new designers, making technical sneakers that eschewed the simpler aesthetics of the past and embraced the new tech age that was happening right before the turn of the century. This is where the Air Humara comes onto the scene, so let's explore its origins and its importance in Nike's history. In 1997, Nike debuted two new and exciting trail shoes, the Air Humara and its sequel, the Air Terra Humara. These models were a part of Nike's Terra line of trail shoes that originated in the 1980s through the Nike ACG line. Both shoes were designed by Peter Fogg, who's now considered an extremely important footwear designer in Nike's storied history, having worked on the brand's running, ACG, sportswear, and basketball lines but the Air Humara was his first design and his personal favorite. According to Mark Richardson at Grail, Fogg was tasked with creating a shoe that embodied technical precision to gel with the brand's newfound desire to pursue hyper-functional design. Fogg found inspiration from some interesting places like the name of the shoe, for instance. Humara was taken from Mexico's Tara Humara or Terra Humara, who are a Native American population inhabiting the Sierra Madre Occidental and known for their long distance marathoners. Its design cues come surprisingly from a motorcycle wheel, as explained by Fogg. I was inspired by a front disc brake and wheel on a motorcycle. The fingers on the shoe radiate out from the center of the shoe like spokes on a wheel. You can see that design better on the Terra Humara, though the Air Humara does feature a web cage on the upper designed to offer added stability, which could be seen as mimicking the spokes on a wheel, I guess. The Tara Humara people were great distance runners in harsh, rocky, and brutal terrain, so Fogg wanted to design a shoe that could handle that. Both the Air Humara and the Terra Humara feature a rugged Goatec outsole designed to step on rocks, roots, leaves, and dirt, a webbed underfoot which keeps sticks and stones from bruising bones, and also non-absorbing materials used for the shoe's uppers to keep water at bay. According to Mark Richardson at Grailed, after all the work he'd done, the shoe almost didn't even get released. Fogg recalled to the shoe game that at one point in a meeting, his developer said that he didn't like the shoe and felt they should stop working on it. However, a little luck went his way and Fogg's marketing manager intervened and helped push the shoe through the sampling phase and into production. The Air Humara and Air Terra Humara releases solidified the brand's drive to not just be an athletic company, but a design company. These models moved the brand into the realm of fashion, and a subsequent Vogue article in 1998 covered the background of the Humara, praising it for its detailed design and research. The Humara has continued to defy expectations with its cult-like following and longevity. Nike's NSW division has continually brought the Humara back in new colors, which is surprised even the designer himself. While many designs go by the wayside and are forgotten over time, the Air Humara has kept its place in the hearts and minds of those who loved it. And for me, it makes me recall a certain time in my life, seeing Nike go through their evolution, and I just remember seeing this fabric midsole wrap on the shelves. It was very eye-catching. It still looks great. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief history of the Air Humara. Thanks for watching. Peace.